it, it's uh, we've gone live now, so you should oh, see it. We're live at, here at the Facebook page for boxbrownie.com. Um, um, the Facebook page, perfect. Okay, so I'm just checking if I can see it now. Oh, I see it. All right, and you'll share it, okay? <laughs> What's up, Big Don? <laughs> I'm going to ask to share my screen here in a minute. Can you hear me all right, Peter? I certainly can, brother. How are you? How are you today? I'm doing excellent. Um, I just checked that you've got all the permissions. <laughs> we've, we've had a few technical issues here, haven't we? Oh, we're we? fine. But <laughs> nothing you and I can't sort out between the two of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you see my screen? I certainly can, yeah. Oh, perfect, perfect. So so technology, we had some gremlins today, so our Zoom uh, live stream wasn't working. So Peter, my, my guest um, on today's Luxury Lunch and Learn uh, was accommodating, and so we're actually on Box Brownies Zoom. Apparently, Facebook live stream is working in Australia, not here in the States, so I appreciate uh, your flexibility. <laughs> no, that's all good, mate. Anything to get us out to the world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I uh, I did a training yesterday for uh, about 50-something agents in Texas. It was an online CE course, and many of them uh, hadn't heard of Box Brownie, so they were thankful, and some of them had heard of them, and they were very complimentary. Um, so um, really looking forward to having you on today, Peter. Thank you. Where, where, where did you say that was, Michael? In Texas. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. I thought you said Mexico for a second there. I'm like, yeah, oh, no, but, but we did a training in Mexico two months ago I and know, uh, I know you, you did. shared your service there. Um, and then I think you, out of curiosity, your Italian uh, meeting today was that from the connection that it certainly was. It, oh, it good, was good. indeed. Uh, it was, it was both that. I've got to, I've got to add kudos. It was both that and Remax Europe. So, Oh, um, nice. they, they, they had, you'd already planted the seed and then Remax Europe had followed up uh, maybe a week later. Oh, good. So yes. Perfect. Perfect. Um, we do, we do have someone from Mexico on board saying g'day. So hi, I'm not sure how I pronounce that. I think the last name is Ariola, but it's Chai, Chai, hey Chai and hi, the moon images, whoever they are. Oh, Good perfect. On. Perfect. So yeah, if, uh, so let you know, this is our looking at the, the dates here. I should know that I think this is our 13th Luxury Lunch and Learn. Uh, I think this is our 13th Luxury Lunch and Learn. We've been doing these every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Our first show was on uh, Friday, April 10th. So right after they shut down basically the country here in the States. Uh, my, my guest today, Peter, is with us uh, from Australia. It's it's 3.42 in the morning and uh, he's, he's joining us uh, for the real estate agents were streaming this live to a bunch of groups as well, Peter. And so uh, those in the real estate industry, if you don't know Box Brownie, uh, you need to get to know them. And if you go to a lot of events uh, and you don't know Peter or, or Brad or Mel, uh, they're great guys. They're the life of the party. I'm really excited to have them on our, have them on our program today. And um, so I, I'm using visuals. Great to be here. Uh, and welcome. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good to, so good to see you. And I've I've actually been following, as you know, yeah, as you can see in the comments, I've been following your luxury lunch and learns. I, I um I am mates with a lot of the guests that you have on your luxury lunch and learns. They've been brilliant so far. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we've tried to have different guests with different backgrounds. Many, of course, are in the luxury real estate space, but we've had uh, we've had a lender on. We had somebody who runs the sixth largest multiple listing service, Rebecca Jensen on. We had Teresa Kenny, who runs the largest real estate board in the United States, second largest uh, in, in the world on. Um, and uh, again, we are in a show and tell industry. I talk about show and tell all the time. And uh, you you know, you and your company are perfect for that. So just a couple housekeeping items before we kind of dive right in um, into this show. So first off, if you guys are watching this uh, via Facebook live stream, please uh, leave us a like, leave us a love, comment below, let us know where you're watching from. And this would also be a good place to ask questions. Uh, again, Peter and I want to make sure we answer your questions. We will be um, putting the replay 
um, in our various groups and and Peter I'm sure we'll keep the replay on, on, on the box brownie page as well so if we don't answer your question during the live stream um, you know forgive us we'll try to get uh, back to you on one of the recordings as well so the whole goal why we, we we launched this luxury lunch and learn so it's lunch our time it's it's almost breakfast time out in Australia was <laughs> to pro provide relative rele relevant information in this unprecedented time so some of the things we're going to talk about um, will uh, will continue on post COVID-19 and some of them might be specific to COVID-19, but we're giving different perspectives. We got people watching these live streams that are in real estate and we of course have some that are, are not in real estate. So uh, let me put the next slide up here. Um, again, this is our guest. We have uh, P Peter, I don't even want to butcher your last name here. Peter, how do you say it in Australian with your little accent there? <laughs> it's Shrevmaid, it's Shrevmaid. Shrevmaid. But you yeah, you're not expected to know that. Speech. I just know him as Peter. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, you're a big deal when you know people say Peter. You you having Peter on, and they know which Peter you're talking about. So uh, <laughs> we got we got Peter on from Box Brownie, and um, people might know what the heck is Box Brownie? Is this guy like a post closing dessert specialist? You know, the name. The first time I heard Box Brownie, I I, I don't. I don't recall, you know, putting two and two together. You've explained to me um, how you came up with the company name, and and Brad, you're, yeah. you know, Brad's a great guy too, and uh, Mel. Um, so I want to make sure I give shout outs to those mates. Um, so talk to me about the name Box Brownie, if you would. Yeah, well, it was actually Brad, Brad's idea. So he's the owner founder. Uh, these cameras here, I think you can see them. They're not phasing in and out. This is a brownie yep. camera, believe, believe it or not, and that they're actually shaped like a box if you look at them they're, they're pretty simple to use these came out in 1901 kodak eastman brought them out these little um brownie cameras and colloquially they were known as the box brownie so um one of one of the slogans that the box brownie had was you take the photo and we do the rest and that's really um i guess the simplistic nature of box brownie uh, our company is that we edit images so um you know, you take the photo, we do the rest with it. And um, that was really Brad's idea. Um, back then I heard about this uh, company maybe five years ago and I, I loved the name. Uh, uh -huh. Box Brownie is probably better known through all of the Commonwealth nations. Big shout out to our Canadian listeners, Indians, uh, our Indian listeners um, in, in, in sort of Western Asia um, and London. They know about the Box Brownie because it's a colloquial term. Across America, people know about the brownie, but they don't generally call it a box brownie. Uh, so yes, we have been confused with with a dessert, a tasty dessert, or um, when we're in Denver and California, people uh, have always asked us if we relax the transaction process um, <laughs> with, with hash brownies, and that's not something we do either. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm based here in the Chicagoland market, and you know, we have a pretty strict. Uh, shelter in place and um, but of course the the marijuana disp you know dispensaries are open of course liquor stores are open but yet you yeah. can't go to some of the other retail stores so um, there's maybe some tax purposes behind that there might be some uh, other purposes behind it but uh, but yeah so I'm sure there's some laced brownies uh, right now in the Chicagoland <laughs> market oh, we're not responsible for them <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, um, so the box brownie, um, show that again for, for those, that, that show the camera again, please. Yeah. So the Kodak camera uh, came out around 1901. It's shaped like a box. Um, and you take the pe picture and we do the rest, which is a great segue um, a little bit into what box brownie does. Um, and I'll type this in, uh, you know, so boxbrownie.com. Uh, is uh, the, their website. You can see it right down here under um, Peter's photo, um, boxbrownie.com. And uh, so bottom line, you guys do some amazing enhancements um, and, and editing, if you will, of various photos. Um, and I wanna show some of that on today's uh, training. Um, and again, I just wanna make sure um, of a couple things. First off, um, Please, if you guys share this live stream, wherever you're watching it from, if you share this live stream or you comment or ask a question to Peter and I, 
Um, I'm going to be giving away one free ticket to the Inman uh, Connect Now uh, training by the end of this week, and one the following and, and, and the following. So over the next three weeks, I'm going to be giving away. Um, three tickets to Inman's Connect now. And so some of you that are watching internationally, perhaps you couldn't attend one of the Inman events because it wasn't cost prohibitive before. Well, now they're doing the first annual digital live event. Um, so the cost is gonna be much cheaper for you. Um, and we're gonna be giving one lucky guest, uh, someone that either likes, comments, shares, um, or ask a question to this live stream as well as the others that we're doing this week. We're gonna give away one a free digital ticket, if you will, to the Inman Connect now. So I wanna make sure I share that. I also wanna make sure I share before we kind of go into some additional questions as well as product demonstration, Peter, um, the next five guests that we have. So of course we have Peter on today. I have Jeff Lasky, who is the CEO of uh, uh, North Shore Barrington Realtors. Uh, it's a real estate association. And he just took that job during COVID-19. So, uh, you know, baptism by fire. We're going to talk to him on Friday. Next week, I got our good friends on from Keeping Current Matters. I got David Osborne on. I got Anthony Hitt, who's the CEO of Engel and Volkers. And then I have a top real estate coach for teams out of Canada, Kathleen Black, on Memorial Day. So every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, same time, same place. Well, Mike, well, Peter, what if I miss... The recording i have a conflict or i'm in australia where can i see replays of these i'm glad you asked you can see them in our facebook group uh, facebook uh you can look go to facebook.com and look up luxury listings specialist and you'll see our group there where we stream them um, all the time so i want to make sure i have that so again if you guys want to be re if you want to be uh, reaping the benefits and get a free ticket to the inman event please leave us a comment, share, ask Peter or ask myself a question. That would be awesome. I already have a comment here uh, uh, from Jeff Nitschke. Jeff saying they are miracle workers. They are lifesavers. Um, <laughs> so uh, big so, shout out to Jeff. Jeff yeah. Jeff's a regular user of our product. So, oh, um, is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see. I actually, I've actually seen him more on um um, on social media and webinars lately than I've seen him in person. But um, yeah, no, Jeff, Jeff's a great guy, Jeff Nitschke, yeah. Really, okay, perfect, perfect. Yep. Um, all right, good, so let me look to see what other questions we have, because we do have questions that come across periodically. Um, all right, the other, another shout out, um, another shout out from Matt, Matt from the East Coast. Uh, Matt, welcome, thanks for watching, thanks for the shout out. So let's get, Let's get right into some product demonstration here. So, so again, from time to time, real estate agents, they might take some photos of a home, Peter. Um, yep. I have some clients, especially when you're dealing with luxury, they wanna make sure that their home is in, in, in the best light possible, right? I tell agents all the time, you only have one time to make a first impression. So, yep. you know, sometimes during COVID-19, depending on which country people are watching from, maybe their professional photographer isn't available and we always recommend professional photos, but you guys are kind of miracle work workers, if you will, and you could take some photos that maybe are done on a smartphone, you know, on a Galaxy, on an iPhone, and you can enhance them to look just as professional, maybe um, as uh, a professional photographer's photo. So um, I wanna show some of the folks, and by the way, I, I jump. I show a lot of visuals and in, in, in our trainings, but I talk about show and tell. We are in a show and tell uh, industry, right? A picture's worth a thousand words, Peter. So having amazing photos, having amazing descriptions, having videos, having 3D walkthroughs. Now I know you guys just unleashed, the timing was perfect with a new product. And I'll talk to you about that in a minute, but I wanna show some people what Peter and Box Brownie um, can do and uh, so let me share with you a little backdrop. So this is a perfect example. This is a home uh, that I've taken our live designation class through. Um, literally, we've done a couple trainings down in Nashville. It's a great area. Peter, I know you were down there at the Berkshire event um, just when COVID-19 was gaining some momentum. And um, this is a property that's currently on the market for around $15 million. It was on the TV show Nashville. And I took my class through this. 
the, the previous listing agent, um, you know, was a great guy, recently passed away, Dennis Johnson, but this is a class picture of this home. And this is the house, Nashville. And I've, one of the things we talk about show and tell, I, I literally created a book. I have literally different types of books that we've created, Peter. There's about 10 of them here for different style homes, different looks. This is a taste specific book. And, and I have a taxidermist book. I've created a book, which we've called Outside the Box, Peter, where we have different visual representations of how we position homes differently than the competition. A lot of, if you will, before and after pictures. And although most of the pictures in our books, when we go on listing appointments or agents that get our designation, if they use these, most of them are actual staging. Um, but in this example, we're going to talk about virtual staging or virtual enhancements, because that is something that you guys did for me. So let's get right into this. I got people texting right here. Uh, uh, so, so perfect. All right, so this is a home that was built in 1999. And again, we, we brought through literally uh, probably 75 to 100 agents through this home, through our class when we were down there. And we gathered feedback from the, the previous agent, Dennis Johnson, as well as our classmates. And a lot of people raved about the home, but they said, man, it feels a little bit older than 1999. And so based on the feedback, what we did is we provided in this example, the before pictures, which is how it actually looks today with, mm. with to box brownie with some pictures of, hey, this is the feedback that the agents and, and, and some of our clientele are telling us that, and including the previous agent, uh, some of the feedback they've received. And so the images that you're seeing on the screen are images that box brownie produced for us based on the feedback that we received we provided them some some colors and some some pictures like hey we want it to kind of look like this and this was the first room first impressions this was the first room when you walk in and again depending on where the, the viewers are watching from you have to disclose 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 is my philosophy and so our multiple listing service um emred uh, is the sixth largest MLS and and the CEO uh, is I've had her on this show and so we can um, put digitally improved pictures but we just have to disclose it disclose it disclose it so depending on where you're at always check with your broker owner check with your real estate board check with your MLS but in this case we could just we could upload um, it's not my listing but if it were my listing I could upload both the real image as well as the digital improved. And so I wanna show people just some of these pictures and then we'll talk about it, okay? But look at this picture, Peter. You guys did an amazing job on this. Yeah, well, this one's our, this one's made our before and afters um, just because I think it demonstrates the simplicity of the actual edit. So, um, you know, there's a couple of things I'll draw your attention to on this one. Um, number one, in number one, the, the, the renovation that we've done is largely superficial. Uh, when you're talking about a luxury listing, uh, we've replaced the chandelier, we've replaced the curtains, we've painted the walls, uh, and we've got some flooring in there. And re really, um, when you look at that and you sort of remove the virtual staging, that has updated the property and given it a modern look. And I think, I think uh, too many people think about marketing as what... Um, their MLS tells them marketing is, or they think about marketing is we're going to get it shot by a photographer and go from there. But in this particular instance, uh, this is a great demonstration of using marketing to remove an objection. Uh, people are arriving at the property and they're obviously saying the same thing. It looks as though my aunt, auntie Betty may pass in that in that room in the coming weeks, um, or it's dated if you want it in, in nice <laughs> nicer terminology. Um, you know, so what you've done is shown them that here is a modern look. And a lot of our clients and users from around the globe will actually provide that secondary image um, and a maintenance contractor's quote on what it actually costs to get there in order to remove that objection. Uh, and that's a, that's a, a, a really, um, I suppose, demonstrable way that somebody can see that yes, I understand your price is correct. I, I understand the value in the house. I actually don't want the hassle of having to do that change. So now you've shown me what the change will look like because I'm a buyer and I'm visual. You've shown me what the, that will look like and you've given me 
a maintenance contractor's quote on how to get there. Well, how about I just make my offer less that, um, you know, the, the, those superficial changes are going to pull up under under three grand. So yeah. it's yeah. So, it's, so so you bring up a good point. So what Peter talked about, let me just recap. So their company literally they digitally improved this form, this den, this this office, this library. They digitally painted. They removed the items digitally, and then they put items back in, and they improved. Um, you can literally. St- darken the stained floors, you can remove wallpaper. These guys have done it all and I'll show you in the other photos. But the second part of this would be what he just said, only 10%, I teach this all the time. This is actually one of our modules. It's our, uh, what module? It's our ten, It's our ninth module out of 16 in our designation, Peter. And it's staging and positioning. So we position, the way you position a home, most people know staging is bringing in furniture or rearranging or neutralization or decluttering, but positioning, how you position a home so that the vast majority of buyers can visually mentally move in. Uh, and that's what mm-hmm. really, what, what we're trying to do here is we're helping buyers and agents and buyers agents, real estate agents, mentally be able to see past the neutralization, excuse me, see past maybe the personalization. You see, because the way this owner lives in her home is the way that you and I live in our home. That's to our own style. But when you go to sell a home, you want more timeless classics. You want to open up your pool of buyers to a larger pool of buyers. And that's really what a, a, a marketing agent's job is, not a listing agent. I hate saying the word listing agent, but those in the industry know it as listing agents. A listing agent throws it on the MLS. That's passive. That's that. that but but aggressive and proactive is a marketing agent. A marketing agent knows what today's buyers are looking for based on market research, based on what NAR is putting out there, that sort of thing. And today's buyers, they want turnkey, Peter. They want to be able to move in and do nothing, yep. okay? Yep. Pre-COVID-19 and during COVID-19, they, they don't want to do any work. So in this example, you mentioned getting estimates. So you get a contractor there, you get a painter there, um, and, and you get actual estimates to turn the before into a, a reality to the after. And you provide that to a buyer or an agent before the showing. You might even post them in and attach them in your MLS. You might draw attention to them in the agent comments. You might have an easel board. Um, you might have an easel board for when the showing is occurring um, so that when a buyer and their agent is touring the home and hopefully you and your team are there at a certain price point, you can point that out. I literally, for this particular property, we had uh, folders made, we had before and after basically brochures. We had nice, high quality, thick brochures made. And, and next time I see you, I'll get those for you, Peter. But we had That'd these awesome. made where that when somebody um, is touring the home, we have the actual brochures of what the home looks like today. But then if somebody, based on communicating with the buyer's agent, oh yeah, Mike, they're also looking at some new construction or they're also, they, they want to modernize, they want something contemporary or whatever. If the feedback is at such that we think they might actually like this look better, we'll provide them the second type of brochure uh, with the actual after. So I wanted to point that out be- and we have, you know, we've done all this kind of stuff for the previous agent. So let's go on to the next picture. So you have the breakfast area right outside the kitchen. It's, you know, where people eat, you know, you have the formal dining room and then you have the everyday area where people eat. And so you can see kind of the previous photos a little bit darker. So you lighten them up. These, uh, these window treatments were expensive. However, they're taste specific. So you guys just tried to neutralize and update some things. Um, anything else you'd like to add to that? No, uh, I mean, this is, a, a, I suppose, less of a change than the previous image that we looked at. Um, but, you know, the, the overall uh, general feel is trying to get someone to imagine them themselves in more of a contemporary home at the end of the day. I think that's what you were after, was it not, Michael? Like that, that, yeah. was the, yeah. that was the, the overall goal was to try and remove some of the dated experience that the purchasers were having when they, the prospective purchasers, when they actually attended the property. So, um, you know, you were using marketing to do that completely makes sense. In the, most of what you see in this room is is actually taking out the dated furniture and, and showing it what it would look like with the furniture in it. Yes, I can see those window treatments um, have come down as well. Yep. But um, the, the lightning and brightening of the room, that's, um, that's image enhancement. And that, 
Uh, you know, really the image enhancement that we did on this is a rectification. Um, it should have probably be done. At, we didn't photograph this. We don't, we obviously we don't photograph, but um, you know, the one thing I would say about this is had, had we um, had control over the photography uh, area, you'd certainly be seeing a lot more outside of the windows on both the before and the afters. That's mm -hmm. um, that's something that we're big on is exposing the exterior up window detail uh, yeah, is, so, is one of the things so, that we have. So right on. over here, one of the things that Box Brownie will do is they'll clean up um, the windows so they're brighter, they're more clear. Um, and it's easier to do that, of course, if you have the original file that you're dealing with, the original photo, um, it's much easier to do that. Um, but that's a that's a good point. You guys do that. Here's another image where based on the feet. Now you did that here a little bit. Um, again, a little bit different angle, but you get yes. the idea. So the previous agent um, shared with me, well, Michael, I've told the owner, you know, she should put a grand piano here. And, and so I kind of described when we uploaded it to you, hey, um, Box Brownie, here's kind of what we're looking for. And again, there might be a round of edits here or there, but but this was the, the final product. So again, digitally removed items uh, again, and you guys um, added the furniture and, and you lightened up the outside. You can see here, um, again, it's a different angle, but the same idea is the sky was kind of hazy. You blew it up and, and made it more mm. inviting. Yep. Yeah, uh, I mean, again, that's a, that's a large part of what we do. Uh, in general, most of the photos that you're showing have come across as quite dark. You can see, if you look at the roof lines in them, there's there's quite a bit of shading uh, Shadow in the corners. Right of, yeah, that's right in the in the corners. Um, and and part of uh, f uh, you know being a good photographer is actually uh, removing that, so it, it it's more similar to what the eye sees when you actually get to the property. So a lot of what we're doing is just being reflective of that. Aside from the the you know the physical changes that you're seeing to the furniture. Um, in this instance, we've replaced the chandelier as well, which is our, yeah. our virtual renovation option. Yeah, yeah. So you removed the pink wallpaper and you, and you renovated the light fixture. So you bring up a, yeah. good, a point, Peter. So literally when, when um, we bring in our professional photographer here in the Chicagoland market, they, they literally have a handheld uh, light. Um, and so what he'll do is let's just say it's his dining room. He will go around with his camera um, and he'll have his camera like all set up like on a tripod if you will right like if it was at this angle and he'll go around and he'll have this this light and he'll he'll walk in this corner and he'll hit his his camera button like to take a photo and it shoots up light and he'll he'll do it over in this area and then this area it's the same angle photo but he's taking it multiple times with light and then he blends and exposes mm. them all together so that you don't have uh, the shadows, but the lighting is better. And I know you guys can digitally do that, but he physically does that. So it makes your job easier if we were to upload it. Yeah. Uh, you, the system you're talking about is bracketing or some Americans know it as HDR. Um, yeah. And as you know, Brad, who, who is, you know, probably the, the best real estate photographer I've seen in my life. He's, he's huge on this because that's that, that one technique makes the, the house, um, you know, I suppose, uh, it look, makes it look professional. It really returns the image to what the eye sees. Are, and I, I'll keep coming back to that. I think that's what you have to do uh, if you're, you're attempting to, it's not only just presenting the property in the best light by, you know, doing things like replacing a gray sky and, and putting a blue sky in there or, or a twilight conversion or something like that. Um, it's not just doing that. It's actually representing what the eye sees when it gets to the property. So, um, you know, that bracketing technique, I can't speak highly enough of. Um, obviously, in this instance, Michael, you and, and us both were dealing with the photography that already existed for this house. So um, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of, it kind of is what it is. And we can go from there. Um, I, I see you've put the media room up at the moment. <laughs> yeah. So um, this, this is another. Um, I just typed in the URL for anybody that's interested. This home is on the market um, in um, in Nashville, it's on the market for, like I said, just under, uh, I think, 15 million. And I'm just typing in the, uh, the URL here um, as well. But, but real quick, Peter, uh, this is the media room, the, the theater, and you guys updated this as well. Um, so again, just giving some examples. Uh, and then we have some cute questions coming across, but I wanted to show this image. This is one of my favorite. You guys will digitally remove items. <laughs> 
So I was selling a home. They had, as you can see in the corner here, a stuff, a full lion. He was a hunter and a water <laughs> buffalo. And I took a selfie. Believe me, I've, you know, I've never killed a, an animal uh, when hunting or anything. So I don't want anybody upset with this image. So I, I, I don't necessarily think it's funny because it's not. But I just wanted to give you some kind of context that you guys literally digitally removed the animals here. Um, so anyways, that's some of the things that you guys do at Box Brownie. Um, and I want to uh, I want to make sure I put your image up here. By the way, if anybody's got any questions or you're interested, we do give away some free items from time to time on our trainings. You can text the word luxury today to get a copy of our luxury listing blueprint along with another bonus item. Um, so I'll leave that on the screen. But I do want to answer a question. Our good friend, which you know, uh, is Craig Rowe. Uh, Craig uh, Peters asked this. He says, um, I've never asked this, but does Box Brownie also employ or contract with other interior designers, especially as it relates to luxury properties? Would an interior designer work in unison with your graphic artist? Excellent question. That's uh, our mate Craig Rao. Um, he, yeah, he's asked me a lot of questions in my time, to be fair, for that guy. So it, it, it is only, the, um, uh, I suppose, fitting that I answer this one as well. Yes, we do. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the things that we've been encouraging physical stages to do, especially in the uh, situation <laughs> uh, that we find ourselves in now, is is work in tandem with us. Um, a lot of physical stages can't operate through California. Certainly New York is still saying no to them. Um, so we, we're saying to those people, um, you know, add us on as a virtual staging edit. They have their own interior designers and they can instruct us where to put the furniture and the, the types of furniture that um, that they wish to put in. But yes, we'll, we'll work with anyone, I suppose, to to create the space. Remembering that, um, you know, we're well aware that it's, it's not us that know the space. We're kind of just getting an image at our end and furnishing it. We always encourage the agent or the interior designer or whoever it is um, to actually... Um, you know, give us some kind of guidance as to where to put the furniture. Now, 90, 95% of agents aren't going to do that. They don't have the time. They'll send it through to us and they'll say it's a bedroom and off you go. But certainly in the in the luxury listing um, area, that happens quite frequently where we do work with an interior designer. And and one um one of those uh, those jobs I'll 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 explain to you is um, there are in New York agents who will stage a home or stage a Let's let's not call it a well. It is a home, but it's it's one of the New York apartments that you see in magazines frequently. Um, they will ask us to stage that in five different ways, just the one scene. And the reason for doing that is they're well aware that they have um, Japanese purchases coming through, and their their idea of furniture is completely different from um, you know the the Western idea of furniture. Or they may have Mandarin purchases coming through. Or they have European, where again the style of furniture is different, and I think that comes back to your point that you made uh, not long ago, Michael, about positioning. That they know where the target audience for that market is, uh, or or could be, so they're covering all their bases by positioning the property differently, and they will have a different brochure to then send out to their Japanese purchases, or um, you know, to Korean purchases, or to Mandarin purchases, or to their European purchases. So. Um, yes, we will work quite um, heavily with their interior designers to create that that space. Um, there, there's no there's no extra price per se unless you want back and forth. Sure. Um, so we charge thirty two dollars to stage a, an image, um, and you know their interior designers. Some of them will just draw on there where they want it, and they'll give guidances to furniture. That's part of the standard thirty two dollars. Then we will work with some who want us to go. They'll, they'll say, look, stage it and then send it back to me. And then I want I want to change it again. I'm not happy with this. Move that over there. Put a blue rug in instead of a green rug. That happens in our custom quote section and can be a little bit more expensive than that. So, um, you know, we'll I guess we'll do anything as, as long yeah. as it achieves the purpose of actually getting the, the home to the the um, home to the to the purchaser or to the intended um, uh, target audience, I suppose. Well, that, that you said the target audience, I mean, that's huge, right? So we tell agents all the time, you know, yeah. know, know who your potential buyer is, you know, your avatar, if you will, right? And and so you, you have to know what feeder markets where the migrate, where, you know, I call migration patterns to realtors, but yeah. feeder markets, 
uh, you need to know where those are coming from. So you use a great example in New York, or if you're down in Miami, you're, you're somewhere that, you know, you have a big international contingency, or you have a lot of relocation coming in from different styles from different parts of the country. Uh, you can't cater to everybody. Um, so that's why we talk about timeless classics. However, if you really want to get niche specific, you mentioned, you know, having different style, different digital, you know, staging, if you will, improvements, uh, based on different regions of where the the buyers are yeah. coming from, um, you know. So be careful. Check with your broker owner. You know your 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 board as far as fair housing and all that stuff. I was doing a training recently, and um, I know I've heard this too. Know, and and you, they say you know, that you can't target a specific audience. Is that where you're going? Yeah, yeah, way, yeah. You, you got to be really careful as far as even. T- t- I mean, I'm Italian, so I can say use this analogy. But if you you know if you if you you know said oh this home would be perfect for you know an italian american or you can't do that kind of stuff here in the states maybe yeah um you know in europe or something you might get so just be careful check with your broker your management your board um you know this kind of my cya cover my rear end um statement to yeah there. I, I think i think on that mike um on that fair housing um thing which which really came out of um uh, one particular area from from memory, and I'll, I'm I'm not trying to downplay it or say it's isolated. What what I'm going to say is you shouldn't restrict your target audience. Um, your, your target audience should be everyone wanting to buy the property, but certainly using marketing, you can posture to um, to have that marketing ready so that presents the the property in the best light to that particular purchaser coming in. Um, remembering that also as part of fair housing, that is your fiduciary responsibility to the seller as well. So, um, you know, I find sometimes we focus on too much what the buyer, what the purchaser wants, but yeah, in, in, in response to that, check with your, check with your association or MLS, but, um, for crying out loud, you still need to do the best thing by the seller. Um, and that should not be to any purchaser's detriment really. Uh, you should just be trying to do get the best possible price for that that property. Yeah, uh, good point. So, uh, as I mentioned, we did a, uh, a three hour CE course um, yesterday for the state of Texas. So every uh, every real estate board or MLS might have a little bit different philosophy. So check to make sure you can do some of those things. If you're doing some, mm. like for example, if you're in Texas, right, it's 90 degrees there now, and and the grass mm. turns burnt brown, right, and so you know you guys will. <laughs> put blue sky and you can green up the grass. And so, you know, in, in Texas you, in, in other areas, you might have to double check. That's kind of um, case by case. Well, I, don't know I can, I can tell, I, I can tell you, I can tell you about Texas. You're not allowed to replace grass. That's not there. You're allowed green grass that is there. So uh, we, we actually <laughs> back to the, back to our origins. I called the um, whatever they are, 300, 500 MLSs that were in Texas because we were getting all sorts of complaints hitting Facebook about how what we did was unethical. So I, I, I spent one night, because as you know, you're awake in our nights, calling every single MLS. Eventually, they directed me to the Te- Texas Association of Realtors Legal Department. And <laughs> we had a conversation. I just said, look, all I want to know, I don't I don't need um, any anything specific. I want you to have a look at our products and tell us uh, what we can and can't do. And virtual staging was no problem. Um, we only add furniture and decor. Some other providers uh, you need to be careful of because they will actually add built-ins and chandeliers and whatever. So virtual staging, all of our products, no no issue. Uh, the one thing that they did come up with was our image enhancement. They said, uh, it's quite clear in some of the image enhancements that you're replacing grass or you're putting grass where grass is not there was the specific term. So uh, in Texas, they said, don't put grass where grass isn't. And so we created a button in response to the Texas Association of Realtors Legal Department to um, allow us to enhance the grass that's there, leave the grass alone or replace grass and put grass where it's not. So we're trying to cover all of the jurisdictions around the world. And and on that, um, uh, you know, you'll find that we do listen. Um, we are very attentive when it comes to the needs of, of any kind of state, county, territory, province, whatever you may do. Uh, so, you know, if you have some, something specific or a specific query, send it through to me because I actually do follow up with the MLSs and the associations to make sure that what you're saying is correct. Um, 90% of feedback that we have on the road is, is unfounded, uh, sadly. There seems to be a lot of misinformation out there as to what is ethical and what is not. And and as such, we engaged the conversation with the uh, National Association of Realtors last year to ensure that we, we met with their code of ethics. 
Anyway, that probably went further down the code of ethics line than you wanted to go. No, but, that, no that was good. <laughs> I mean, that, some... that, that literally came up yesterday um, in the training yesterday. So um, yep. you know, I, I like to know that too. You know, we're getting ready. We're going to be doing a, a, a live uh, online luxury designation class here in a couple of weeks. And, and we spend a lot of information, you know, a lot of time on the various m modules to talk about how agents position homes. So the more thorough you are, I'm taking notes. I was on a call yesterday with somebody um, just talking literally um, about the, um, you know, the pocket listings and the private network um, and oh, yes. coming soon yes. um, because I need to, I need to, refresh my memory on it a little bit because our MLS um, MRED is, is broker owned. And so, um, you know, we've already had some systems into place, but, but anyways, it's, it's always good to, to know what's mm. going on. So uh, yeah. thank you for that detailed information. Don't forget if you guys uh, leave a comment, leave a like, uh, share this, uh, share the replay, um, you'll be en enrolled into a uh, free uh, ticket to the upcoming Inman Connect now. And these are our next guests. Uh, you can always go to Luxury Lunch and Learn um, to see what's in the pipeline as far as our next guest. And for replays, go to facebookgroup.com. Just a, a, another 10 more minutes here, Peter. Your, your time is very valuable. I appreciate it. Uh, we got some That's great... Good. We got some great uh, feedback. We got Nick Nick Tiger uh, from Miami. Nick is... Uh, <laughs> re, Nick's watching. We got some others. What up, Nick? Uh, so... Uh, tell, tell me about the, the, the effects of COVID-19. I know when all this was rolling down, I was in Mexico teaching a designation class, helping them launch their luxury yeah. division. Literally, I taught it on March 10th, and then the 11th and 12th is when the National Basketball League uh, postponed their season and, and, and um, the NCAA. And, and you were flying, I think, from a conference in Vegas to the East Coast, and it, it got canceled before, while you mm. were in midair. And, and at the time, Mexico only had, you know, one or two cases. And, and so obviously things have snowballed. How, how has it affected Box Brownies, a number of orders maybe in the United States compared to other regions out of curiosity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, the the number of orders in the United States has increased, but that's because um, we provide a solution to a lot of the scenarios that are that people see at the moment, like not being able to get a professional photographer to site, or um, you know, not even being able to get to site yourself. We actually provide a lot of solutions that allow you to market that house professionally, quickly, affordably. So um, you know, we haven't seen a downturn in jobs, fortunately. In the in the US, but we have seen a percentage downturn in users uh, in our in, in our regular client base. So, uh, you know, let's say Mike Lafito is a regular user, you would be down twenty percent. Um, now, our overall jobs are up because we have had uh, more clients come on board, and they are lodging jobs. People who have either sat on the fence and haven't had. Uh, to to use us in the past or haven't wanted to use us in the past or whatever the case may be, or people who are just finding out about it um, as a solution that they're looking for right now. So, um, you know, I would say across the board, <coughs> excuse me, existing users are down 20 to 25%. Okay. That's everywhere. Um, we've, we've kind of gone up because we are able to, um, you know, provide a solution to the current issue, okay. if, that's, if that makes sense. Perfect. Uh, I got to talk a little bit about the swag here. You know, you've got some box brownie. Uh, you got a nice shirt on there. You got your background. You know, I think I gave you some luxury listing specialist shirt. I'm wearing my, my American luxury shirt today. Um, so one of the things that we're doing is uh, we're, we're giving out some stuff as well. But uh, folks that are interested in some swag gear, you can go to luxuryspecialistgear.com. We got a lot of different luxury shirts for women, females. We actually have these new things called the objection handling playing cards. Did I give you these? No, I didn't get them. I have the black shirt that's in the middle at the top. Yeah. I didn't give you a, pl a playing card at Inman. <laughs> no, uh, no, I didn't get a playing card. I gotta card, get no. you one. So, anyways, <laughs> that's uh, okay. so uh, if people want more information on, on you and your product, uh, what, what's the best, uh, what, what do you recommend there, Peter? Look, we have, um, all of our information is at our website, so boxbrownie.com, but um, I, I am not one of those people who don't hand out uh, my details. You can contact me directly. Uh, my name is Peter. It's pretty easy. So it's just peter at boxbrownie.com. Um, if you need to, 
if you need to get me um, or send me an email or hurl abuse at me because something I said didn't make make sense or whatever. I'm, I'm <laughs> open to listen to all of that. You just uh, need to send me an email. You can find me on all of the socials. I have a ridiculously long name, which is um, there on the screen in front of you. There is only one of me in the world as far as I'm aware, so you can always track me down there. So, uh, you know, don't be scared of doing that on all of the socials. You won't find them on Tinder or Grindr, but I am on, on Facebook and Instagram and all of the others. Um, so, look, don't, you know, don't be a stranger. For any of our customer service questions, you're probably better off going direct to our 24-7 uh, customer service support, which is at boxbrownie.com. There's a chat there. Uh, there is a phone number there and there's email addresses. Remembering um, right now we're having a bit of issue with the, um, our phones related to the whole COVID situation that is that is happening. Um, our customer service teams are obviously stay in place in a lot of regional areas. So um, chat is the best at the moment. Um, but if you need me, yep, hit me up via email. Uh, and if you forget all of this, hit Mike up. He will always have my contact details. So. Yeah, yeah, please. So for, for some of you that are watching that, uh, let me see here. I have my contact information. I have my, yeah, for those of you that would like uh, ways to get in touch with me, this is my email, uh, Michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, Michael at Mar Marketing Luxury Group. Those are some of our websites. Uh, we are uh, taking our uh, designation internationally. We have people that are fluent in various different languages that are, are line, lining up to teach our course uh, both digitally and you know, over the internet, as well as live when things uh, open up a little bit. Um, I've, I've been a big believer in, of, of your product, uh, Peter. You guys do some amazing things. Um, really good, good people, and um, really appreciate what you're doing. Um, so, let me let me check for any questions, and then if not, then we'll we'll let you go. No dramas. Um, thanks for thanks for having me on, Mike. Um, while you're yeah. checking for questions, really appreciate um, how you. Uh, support us and have supported us for the past three years. So I can thank you for that. Um, and I'm sorry we don't get to do this in person. <laughs> and I'm looking at a screen um, in the early hours of the morning, but I'm sure uh, we'll we'll be laughing having a beer or a Moscow mule about this uh, later on. Uh, big shout out to uh, my mate Craig Rao, who's still on. Um, hell, yeah, he, he likes to troll me every now and then online. <laughs> he has, he, he's been quiet today, but... He's uh he's doing well. Yeah, we got well. I got you on here though. We I gotta I gotta. You might be able to notice this uh, right here. You, does this look familiar to you? <laughs> Tito's. Does yeah, it does. <laughs> so, so I gotta tell this story real quick. So, uh, our, good, our good friend Jim Morton. I don't know if Jim's on. He's probably flying his plane somewhere, uh, or on his on his boat. But uh, good friend Jim Morton and I. Um, Jim was hosting a party at uh, Inman uh, in New York a couple years back and. Peter and I think Brad even came along with us, um, and uh, and needless to say, they had never had a Moscow Mule, right? A Moscow well, mule I'd was... I'd never had one. You said come, you said come. There's this um, there's these people I want you to meet. So I went there and and they had they had these copper cups full of something I'd never heard of uh, called a Moscow Mule. So yeah, it was great. It was great. So anyway. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I may have partaken in a few too many. That's where Michael's going. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not going there at all. I'm just saying it was a memorable they, night. We had a good time in New York. So uh, those we'll those mule those mules have some kick. They, they certainly do. <laughs> so hopefully we'll be doing that sooner than later. So this uh, will be on the Facebook group uh, boxbrownie.com. Check it out. It'll be on yep. our group luxury listing specials. We'll be streaming it. We'll post it on our. Um, We'll post it on our Facebook group here that I just showed a few minutes ago. We'll, we'll post it here. Um, and then uh, finally, if you guys have any other questions, you can email Peter at peter at boxbrownie.com or check out boxbrownie.com. And then the last thing is, um, it's the last thing. I was going to say one last thing. Um, oh, it will be on our YouTube channel as well. We'll post it to our YouTube. So, Peter, I appreciate it, mate. Uh, keep raising the bar in real estate. Appreciate all the support you've given us and uh, keep keep doing what you're doing. All right, man? Will do. Thanks, Mike. And uh, remember to prove them wrong. Hey, prove them wrong. I love it. <laughs> Take care. All right. I'll see you later, guys. Right, peace. Thanks. Um, I just...
I believe that has ended the live stream. I'm just, yeah, I'm just waiting for it. All right. And, uh, so if 